no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending This is your moment of clarity from LeeCamp.net Today I come to you with a rather broad question Why are we here? Some say we're here to ask questions, like, why are we here? You know, to ponder life and explore the universe in a way that other mammals are utterly incapable of, and that turtles are easily frustrated by. I once met a mollusk who had worked out some crude thoughts on the issue, but after dissecting them and him, I was left with more questions than answers. And if we are here to question and explore, think and grow, then why is so little of our time spent actually doing that? And so very much of our time is spent deciding exactly which fixings we want on our sandwiches. You think you have it all worked out, and then Subway Sandwiches adds olives to the options, and the whole procedure is thrown into flux. I find myself staring blankly at the scared food service boy with sandwich artist written across his chest. He and I both know he is not an artist unless acne is a talent, in which case I'm showing far too little reverence for the Picasso of our time. And I'm not just saying that because his nose pointed heavily to the left. So why are we here? Perhaps we've been cursed with this ability to think about the possibility of our species while still behaving like goddamn chimpanzees. We have the capacity to feed and take care of every human being on the planet. And yet, when we try to put that compassion into action, we find ourselves just strapping a sweater onto our dog. Sure, he looked cold, but did we not breed them to have the heart health of William Howard Taft and the bone density of a Kit Kat? Then we brought them up to New York or Chicago or some other city where the average winter day can down an ox or Danny Trejo. I have a dream of a world where the Bangladeshi child who sewed that sweater will get to meet the dog who wears it. But let's be honest, that's probably not why we're here. Are we here to service a higher power like a Vishnu or a Viacom or the almighty dollar? It seems unlikely. Dollars are, aren't, aren't even things anymore. Most money is never printed. It's just a balance on a computer screen. So really, it's a thought. Most money is literally a figment of our imagination. Seems odd that we should exist just to service a thought. Unless... That thought is Scarlett Johansson covered in baby oil, sucking a ping pong ball through a garden hose. In which case, that seems like a noble pursuit. Of course, it's also easy to list all the wrongs of humankind and come to the conclusion that maybe we shouldn't be here. Maybe we're a mistake. War, death, famine, genocide, Ricky Gervais. But perhaps the more traumatic realization is that many of the things we consider morally acceptable are, at the very least, suspect. There was a time in America a very short period ago when slavery was considered moral, and even for some of the most ethical people, it was considered a necessary, though distasteful, practice. It was viewed the way we view picking up dog poop off the sidewalk, you know? We're all uncomfortable with it, we're pretty sure society took a wrong turn to, to put us here, but we don't see any other way, so we figure let's keep doing it. It seems quite possible that we will one day, maybe even in our lifetimes, come to view prison as we now view slavery. There are more black people locked up in prison than there were slaves in 1850. And of course, it's not just a racist system, it's also weighted against the poor. And there are basically two types of people losing years, if not decades, of their life in a cell. Those who broke a minor rule of society, you know, don't steal, don't do drugs, don't attach a strap on dildo to the Elmo hired to walk around a child's birthday party, thereby causing numerous toddlers to ask their parents very uncomfortable questions. And then there are those prisoners who are truly sick. The truly sick need real help and treatment. And the others could be more humanely punished, perhaps forcing them to, to be Elmo at a children's birthday party would do the trick. Anyway, the point is we've progressed past slavery, past corporal punishment, past the death penalty, unless you're someone who finds big words scary and thinks fortune cookies are magic. So it seems that we will progress past extended decades-long jail sentences for crimes, and we'll look back on this time as simply P. 
people who did not yet figure out a way to behave morally, nor find a morning radio format that didn't involve a prize guy yelling funny noises at roughly 30 second intervals, followed by uproarious laughter by the other radio show personalities, which must be put in heavy quotation marks because they usually have anything but personality. Maybe that term's meant to be ironic, like the Department of Homeland Security, which proceeds to invade every bit of my personal space. In fact, I personally have never been invaded by the Taliban, but the Department of Homeland Security demands to grab my balls on a regular basis. I'm not saying the Taliban aren't assholes. I'm just saying I have less of a personal grudge against them than against the DHS or one of many prize guys. So why are we here? It's clearly not to look after the planet, because if that's the case, then no one has informed us yet. It would be like if tomorrow we found out that the purpose of the military was to prevent the rape of its own soldiers. They'd be like, what? Really? Ah, oh, shit, we haven't spent ten minutes on that. Ah, oh, did, did, can someone check with Larry? Did Larry do something about the, about the rape thing? We are clearly not here to be stewards of the land. All you have to do is spend 30 seconds looking at a factory farm and observing animals who spend their entire lives in cages so small they can't even turn around. And once you've wiped the vomit off your face, you will rethink your chicken McNuggets. At least six of the nine of them. I myself am a vegetarian, although I know I could be better. I have been known to eat an animal if it has wronged me in some way, because then I feel it's, it's morally acceptable. For example, I ate elk meat once because he had sold me $10 of provolone for like twelve fifty. Okay, and eating him might have been a bit draconian to me, but in my defense, he had not given his woman a child, and therefore, evolutionarily speaking, he was a dead end. So what makes us humans so certain that we were put here or that we evolved here in order to have full control over all the other animals, even to the point of forcing them to wear little hats and ride around on bicycles for our amusement? Eating them in a white wine sauce is, is, is breathtakingly humane when compared to the funny hat treatment. Perhaps we're completely wrong on this matter, and the pigs were the ones put here on this strange planet to have full reign over us. And we just fucked it all up by talking them into attending a barbecue and then getting a the jump on them. I don't know. I'm just saying we should reconsider this Barbra Streisand-level dictatorship over the animal kingdom. Especially the mollusks who seem to have worked out some rudimentary thoughts on life. Well, I'll wrap this up now. And I admit, perhaps this is too much thought to put into a mere Subway sandwich. I ultimately did go with the olives, in case you're curious. But the whole thing tasted like the ass of a monstrous beast. Or perhaps that's just the flavor of pesticides, GMOs, and sadness. But the day was not a total loss, I'll have you know. I crafted a crude silver medal out of a York peppermint patty and awarded that to the young artist behind the counter for outstanding achievement in acne. Made his day. Really did. So perhaps simple gestures of kindness are the reason we're really here. That's been your moment of clarity from LeeCamp.net. I'm coming to Los Angeles and Montreal to perform live. Details at LeeCamp.net slash schedule. The music here at the end is Folk Devils by Rooftop Revolutionaries, who I will be performing with in Los Angeles. The end Deep fighting.